And here we go. So, uh, those of you who are new to our webinar series, my name is Labor Market Information here at the South Carolina. And today's webinar is a review uh, of our website. Very excited to have an operation set up for a little less than a month now. Uh, but we wanted to take the opportunity to show those of you, uh, A, that we do have a website. Uh, it was uh, uh, perhaps a little bit of a, a, a buried secret uh, previously, um, and to show you more importantly how how you can make use of this site to uh, information about our leadership and what's going on in South Carolina. So uh, the uh, the URL for the website is at put it on your screen right now. SCWorkforceInfo. That into the department and you get our help my home page of the open platform. So if you are accessing some of the documents, I've just been told my audio is sorry. Um, all right, hopefully that's better. Uh, so as you can see here, scworkforceinfo.com, part of the SC Works online services platform. And when you punch in the URL, you get this home page. Um, so on the left hand side, uh, you can see that uh, we have a, a news feed. So obviously anybody who's been on social media, you know what the deal with this is. Um, so we're just going to be posting uh, updates when there's a new data release, when there's a new report, uh, what have you, press releases, things like that. Um, so those will be updated as they appear. So you can see here the most recent uh, the recent release was our employment situation press release, which comes out typically on the third Friday of the month, uh, which had uh, uh, a couple different data sets of, uh, worth of information uh, in it. Um, and you, if you scroll down, you can see there are additional, um, there are a number of things that get updated on the same day on November 18th. Um, but you get the idea and either there's a, a link to the resource so for example there's a link to the employment situation so if we click on that what do we get we should get a link to the main due website and ta-da here's your press release that came out or there's just a an indication that you should uh, click a button on the right hand side for more information so you can see here on the right hand side we have these these quick link buttons um, and these are designed to make it uh, substantially easier to find the information that you uh, needed. Um, with the previous website, a lot of this was was buried in in links after links after links, and you had to know exactly how to get where you were trying to go um, to find what you were looking for. Here, we've tried to uh, 
put some buttons, you know, again, kind of try to try to mimic that smartphone experience of, uh, you know, making it easier to find the raw information that you are looking for. So there are, I believe, 21 total um, buttons. We're not going to go through every single one of them, but I want to give you a sense of what all we have going on here. So, uh, so these first five icons here you see local area unemployment statistics current employment statistics quarterly census of employment wages occupational employment wage statistics and employment projections those are the five primary deliverables in terms of information that is produced by the by my staff by the uh, labor market information division team um, the first four of those are are produced in conjunction with the bureau of labor statistics which is part of the u.s department of labor uh, the projections data is produced in conjunction with the employment and training administration which is a, a different part of the uh, US Department of Labor. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at what we've got here. So we'll, let's, let's start with the first one. So local area unemployment statistics. This is more or less what it sounds like. Um, and for each of these, helpfully, we actually tell you what it is. Uh, so there's a brief narrative that sort of summarizes uh, what Laos is, how it's used, why it's important, uh, things of that sort. So if you scroll down, you can see there's some, some text. And in this case, uh, there's a bit of a breakdown of the differences between current employment statistics and local area unemployment statistics because they're both released monthly and sometimes they can produce uh, results that might appear to be uh, contradictory. So this explains uh, how the two data sets are calculated. Um, so in any event, there's also a link for to the to the BLS website. So if you wanted to see uh, if you want to learn more about about the, the products, that would be how you would do it. Um, so up top here, we've got these three large buttons, OK? So uh, a download button, an analyze button, and a dashboard button. So if you click on the download button, you're going to get the, the option to essentially just download a spreadsheet with all of the data. So as it's uh, currently organized here, uh, you can see local area employment, unemployment statistics selected. You select uh, a year. And you select uh, either CSV or Excel or both spreadsheet format. If you click download, go ahead and do that. And you can see that there's a, a file that's placed in wherever your downloads end up that would allow you to uh, review all, all Laos data for 2022. Now, as you can see here um, at the bottom of your screen, uh, this will tell you all the various uh, geographies for which Laos data are available. So you've got the, the state data, metropolitan area, uh, micropolitan area, counties, uh, cities of at least 25,000, uh, et cetera. So uh, local area employment statistics is going to tell you the number of people who are employed based on uh, uh, essentially an extrapolation from a, from a survey of households. You're going to have the number of people who are unemployed, which means they are out of a job but have been actively searching for work in the last month. Uh, the combination of those two numbers is the, the total labor force. And then the unemployment rate is the percentage of the labor force that's unemployed. So those are the four major statistics that are, are reported in the last data. And again, those are reported for a large number of data, uh, large number of geographies. Uh, this data is also in our trends publication, which we put out monthly. We should have the new edition of that coming out uh, on Friday. So uh, that would be another resource if you're looking for Laos data. Um, so you've got uh, the second button here is this this analyze feature. This is uh, the product that's provided by our, our software vendor that allows you to to build a custom table essentially is, is how it's primarily used so let's go ahead and take a look so um, you can see here the default is just provide the state number the state numbers uh, for the most recent time period so you can see here october 22 south carolina and then it, it gives those four numbers that i mentioned uh, just now it also indicates whether or not it's a preliminary estimate which it typically is if it's the most recent month um, you also see that there's a seasonally adjusted checkbox here, so that tells you that the data are seasonally adjusted to, to keep track of things like people uh, entering and leaving the workforce for summer employment this time of year for uh, for typically working in, in retail and such for the, the holiday shopping season. Uh, but let's say we wanted to we want to you know generate a different set of data here. So let's say we wanted to know for the last uh, six months. So we're going to check May through October. And we want to know instead of statewide, what if we looked at cities? So we're going to, again, just check and uncheck these boxes in these drop down menus. And then uh, let's just do all of them. So uh, I believe there's 20 cities for which we have well, there's 17 here. Um, but this this covers the largest cities in in South Carolina. 
and it provides the data for the people who are living in those cities, not the people who are, are working in those cities. So for example, um, you can see here, you've got data for uh, Aiken, Anderson, et cetera, and you've got the uh, the numbers. These They're organized by month, so you get the, the numbers for May. Uh, and if you increase the number of findings, you see June, July, et cetera. And then at the bottom here, you can then download that as an Excel file, as a PDF file. You can print it out, whatever you want to do with it. So that allows you to build custom tables and such that, that you know, depending on what you're looking for, that might be what you want to do. Or maybe you're more of a visual person and we got something for that too. So uh, you'll see here, we've got this dashboard button, right? So let's click on that and see what that does. Uh, so that opens a new tab here and you'll see that you get a Tableau dashboard. Um, so this allows us to uh, view the data in a more visual manner. So the first tab here uh, is a county overview. So for each county, um, and again, it defaults to the most recent uh, month and year, October 2022, and you see uh, the data for each county. So they have the percentage in the county, you have the, the color gradient, so lighter colors indicate lower unemployment rate, higher colors indicate higher and darker colors, uh, higher unemployment rate. Then when you hover over a county, you get detailed information. So you can see here for Fairfield County, here's the breakdown of, of uh, the composition of the labor force and the unemployment rate there of 5.1%, of which is that 468 divided by 9106. And we have this data, yeah, every month going back to January of 1990. So just pick one at random, February 1997. Here's what the unemployment rates looked like by county. Um, so you've got that going on, and then you've also got the local area, uh, the, the analysis tab. Um, so for example, uh, you can see here we've got United States, you've got South Carolina, and then you've got the data for all 46 counties. Um, I will note that uh, if you select seasonally adjusted, all you have is the U.S. and South Carolina, just because there's not the ability to filter uh, by, you know, seasonally adjust for county level data. Um, but if we go back to not seasonally adjust and we select Dorchester County, for example, uh, the map adjusts to the outline of Dorchester County, you get the unemployment rate in, at the bottom by month, and you get uh, a bar graph that shows sort of what's, what are, what are the trend lines in, in labor force dynamics over that, uh, over the year. So of course you can then select a different year if you want. And again, that goes back to 1990. So those are the dashboards. Um, that allows you to, to sort of play around with the data. Like I said, if you're, if you're looking for a more visual product, uh, that might be helpful. Um, so you see here, we've got those three options for each of these uh, each of these products. Now for, uh, for some of these, uh, for example, for projections, we don't yet have uh, the dashboard that's still in development, but we're hoping to have that uh, by the end of the year. Um, so employment projections are a little different in that you've got four different data sets. You've got short and long-term data as well as occupational and industry data. So again, industry is the kind of company you work for. Occupation is the kind of job that you have. So we have uh, OEWS as well as the projections that'll sort by occupation. Uh, CES, QCW, and the projections are industry data. All right, so... So you get a sense of how, how to how to play around with that. And again, these are data that we produce. So obviously, if you have questions about it, uh, we're definitely in a position to help. Uh, our email address, if you're not already familiar, is lmicustomerservice at do.sc.gov. You shoot that, shoot that uh, email address and uh, it'll go to us here at uh, at do and we'll uh, get back to you pretty, pretty quickly. Um, if there's uh, any questions you have about how to use the website or uh, you're having trouble getting the data you're looking for. So uh, some other things I want to show you that, that are on here is uh, this this uh, little flame button uh, leads you to our hot jobs uh, feature. So for uh, both the state as a whole, as well as each of the 12 local workforce development areas, we have this hot jobs publication. Essentially what it does, we'll just click on Greenville. Um, what it does is, uh, gives you the jobs in a given area that are uh, expected to grow faster than average and have a wage that is above the state or regional average, uh, as well as those have a certain number of uh, certain number of annual openings. You don't want to highlight an occupation where they're only hiring one or two people a year. Um, 
so we uh, we're in the process of updating these. We'll have some new uh, new graphics and and new data uh, in the near future, but it gives you a good idea if uh, if you're if you're curious about what jobs are, uh, you know, potentially have an upward trajectory. And you can see here they're sorted into uh, jobs that require um, a high school diploma or less, jobs that require uh, some some college, and then jobs that require at least a, a four year bachelor's degree. Um, so you see how that works. Uh, next, we also have this. Uh, next to that, we have this job journeys product. So this is uh, this this takes jobs and organizes them by career cluster and sort of sorts out what what a potential career ladder could look like. So if we click on business management and administration, for example, uh, you'll see here we have um, yeah again it's sort of sorted by occupational uh, tier uh, in terms of uh, required education level and it highlights uh, you know what the average wage is in South Carolina, what the what the projected growth of that occupation is, and it sort of takes you through a trajectory of uh, of educational attainment. Again, in the process of updating the data, updating the graphics, um, so we'll post those and, and we'll put a thing in the, the news feed when those are refreshed. Uh, if you scroll down further on this page, um, you see there's a button for uh, community profiles. So those are, uh, this takes a lot of the data that we produce and, and, and condenses it into a single PDF uh, file uh, that can be used for for handouts, for things of that sort. Uh, so for example, if we wanted to see the community profile for the Trident uh, region, which is Metro Charleston, um, you get an, an automatic PDF. So uh, economic data, employer data, and industry data uh, broken out here. Uh, uh, this is primarily our data with some other, uh, other information mixed in, uh, but gives you a sense of, a, a, gives you a good overview of what's going on yeah, uh, with respect to the local labor force. Again, that's also a product that we're in the process of, of updating. Uh, there's also a link here uh, to our trends publication, which I mentioned earlier. So uh, if you happen to be on the LMI website as opposed to the main do website, that's the fastest way to get over there to view current and past issues of trends. Uh, the labor supply and demand chart. Um, so when you click on that, we have a, a, a previous year's worth of data, but if you click on October 22, this is comparing the number of job postings that are reported by the Help Wanted Online product uh, that Do has a subscription to, which basically just crawls around the web and, and identifies all the various um, uh, job, job openings on various boards and compares that to the number of people who are currently unemployed, which again means they are looking for work uh, in the past month actively searching. And you can see here that, um, as I'm sure you're aware, there are a lot of job postings and they are uh, at, at this point higher than the number of people who are, who are currently seeking work. So that's why you hear all about labor shortages, but this isn't the case everywhere. So for example, you, you can see here in the PD, uh, there are actually not more job openings uh, than uh, persons who are unemployed. Uh, it's actually two to one in the other direction. Um, so you see that, and then there's a, a bar chart on the second page of the data by workforce area. So we got that. Um, we also have the economic analysis report. So this is something that we are required to produce annually as part of our federal grants. And so you see here, if we click on the most recent one, the 2022 report, which was published um, back in September, I believe. Um, it's designed to be it's designed to be an overview of of what's going on in the state. Uh, it covers everything from from GDP and foreign trade to some of the data we've already talked about that are produced by LMI. Uh, you know, designed to be kind of a one stop shop of you know if you have to if you only need to read one report, um, this this is the one to to take a look at. Um, so you've got that. Uh, this next row, you have uh, research publications, job seeker publications, and archive publications. So, as the name would imply, uh, there's there's research, there's resources for job seekers, and there's previous stuff that's um, not necessarily the most current. Uh, one of the things that we're doing with the the staff we brought on board is we're going to be starting to to update. Uh, update publications more regularly, put out more and different kinds of, of data and research. Um, so if you look at the research publications page, we, we just have two things there uh, currently, but we'll be we'll be working on that. Um, 
Next, you have the uh, in the last row, you've got a data release calendar. So this tells you when the national and state uh, unemployment situation data are released by uh, by month. Um, as I said, typically the national numbers come out the first Friday after that month. So we actually have the November national report coming out on December 2nd, which you can see here. And then our report for November will come out two weeks later. And uh, obviously later this month, we'll, uh, later in December, we'll update this with, to, to put the 2023 numbers on here. Um, we also have a help and reference page. Um, so this is just sort of a brief overview of what's going on here, as well as the, the contact email, LMI customer service at do.sc.gov. And the last one is this more resources button uh, that just has cool links, stuff that, that I found or somebody on my team found that were like, hey, we use this a lot. Let's let's put it let's put it out there uh, so that other people can have a look at it. So that's that's what that's going. That that's what that's about. Um, so I've rambled on long enough. Uh, I think that gives you a sense of of how to use our website, um, the sorts of resources that are available there. And uh, with that, I think I'll kind of wrap it up and take any questions that we that we have. So Dr. Grady, we did get a question in. Uh, when I go to scworkforceinfo.com, uh, SC I don't see the main page like you're seeing. How do I get there? It, it's a SC Works kind of page, but not that one. Right. So, so it is a. We're sort of off in a weird corner of of the the SC Works platform. Um, so if you're on that website for for other reasons, um, and so let me just take you to the the, the home page of the jobs.scworks.org uh, platform. Uh, so if you are uh, claiming unemployment and looking for work, or you're accessing other services that are provided by by Do or the workforce ecosystem, you're probably familiar with the SC Works platform. So if uh, for whatever reason the, the LMI page does not load. All you have to do is uh, scroll down on this page. And uh, there's a couple different links for it in various places. You can either scroll down here to the, where it says labor market information, or uh, there's a drop down for LMI and you just click LMI home. And that should take you to the SC Workforce Info page. So there you go. Excellent. Uh, one more question. Uh, how often is the website information updated? Yeah, so that's that's going to vary. Uh, so for example, uh, like I said, uh, some of this is our LMI produced data in conjunction with the federal government. So uh, Laos and CES are monthly. So as, I, as it said in that data release calendar, those data are updated two weeks after the, the federal data come out typically. Uh, there's some wobbliness in the calendar later in the winter uh, where there's some some revisions to make sure that uh, the state level data line up with the national data. Um, so you've got that quarterly census of employment wages, as the name would imply, is updated quarterly. Uh, we'll have the data for the second quarter of 2022. That'll be published, I believe, next week. Uh, OEWS is an annual product, uh, so that is that's based on a survey that's done once a year. It's done every year in May, and then to make sure that the data are validated and processed properly, it takes a while to, to get the final results. So the data for May of 2022 will be published in March or April of, of 2023. Uh, the projections uh, are uh, updated every other year. Um, you have short term, which are two year projections, and you have uh, long term, which are 10 year projections. Other resources are updated. Um, sort of as new data come in. Um, and, and obviously we'll be publishing reports which we'll we'll publish when they're done. Uh, so there's not really a set schedule for for other products. You have other things uh, I mentioned earlier, like the economic analysis report is done annually. The supply and demand uh, data are updated monthly, but it uh, it really varies based on the based on the resource. We did have a final question, but you kind of answered that during your presentation uh, about when the other dashboards would be available. Yes, yes. Uh, so like I said, we're, we're hoping to have those done uh, by the end of the calendar year. Um, I believe, so I believe we have, you saw the last one, I believe CES is also active. 
Um, and then the other three, QCW, OEWS, and the projections, I believe, yeah, they're, they're still in uh, in progress, but we are working to get those up and running. We also have uh, the agency dashboard, which is on the main do website, which uses that same Tableau platform uh, that has uh, some of the data that are featured here there as well. Very good. Thank you, Dr. Grady. All right. Well, um, well, yeah, if we don't have any further further questions, uh, we'll go ahead and wrap it up and give everybody five minutes, uh, five minutes back. But thanks for those of you who tuned in. And uh, I believe we have one final webinar for the year, and that will be uh, three weeks from today, December 21st. Um, so we hope to have you tune in for that. So thanks for your time and uh, have a good have a good day.